Section 4.1 is about extreme values of functions. So the example your book gives, it's a good way to get us to start to think about this. If you had a function, m of v, that told you what gas mileage you got when you drove your car at a certain speed, then you would probably want to use that function to figure out how fast should you drive your car to get the best gas mileage. There's a note here, it's probably not very realistic because the chances of you having that kind of a function for your car is pretty small. But this process of looking for high points and low points on a function because they're things we might want to use to help us save money or grow the most corn or you know maximize or mi maximize output or minimize cost, that's one of the things that calculus is most useful. So we're going to start our exploration of that here in 4-1. So you could, if you had that kind of a function, you could make this graph of that function and you'd say to yourself, I want to know where my gas mileage, my M, is the highest, and you would look for this point, which is the highest up. So we're going to learn in section, in chapter four, some tools we can use to find points like that algebraically. But here's something to notice. This place is a place where our graph has a horizontal tangent line. So that's going to be part of our job is to start to look in this chapter in this section, start to look for places where we have a horizontal tangent line because they tell us about what we call extreme values of our function. All right, a note here, it's, we have graphing calculators and computers now that make this work much easier. It was pretty easy to just type that function into your calculator and hit the maximum button and it finds the maximum. But before we had those tools, we need a ways to find these by hand, and they are still very useful. That's what chapter four is all about. And it turns out it's gonna require us to use everything we've learned already about finding derivatives. So in order to look for these minimum and maximum values, we're gonna have to settle on some vocabulary to use. So you see some notes at the top of your notes paper sort of summarized here. The absolute extreme values are the highest and or lowest point on a function in a given domain. Another name for absolute is global, and the plural of extremum is extrema. So I could say, please find the absolute um, extrema. You'd find the absolute minimum and the absolute maximum. Remember, I hope I'm making this point in class, which is that the AP test is written so that it really tests your calculus knowledge. So they won't ask you on the AP test, okay, here's, here's a graph, it looks like a parabola, find the absolute minimum. And you would say, oh, well, I, I can use my eyes and see that it's right there. That's not a calculus question. We're gonna talk in a minute about how to use calculus to find these places, but for now, we just have to make sure we understand what these words are. So here, I see that the pictures that I Xeroxed for you on the side of your notes paper didn't come out very clearly. Um, but the big idea here is the minimum and maximum of a function could change depending on whether you limit the domain that we're talking about. So this first picture, I'm not gonna limit the domain. This is a regular old boring y equals x squared. It looks like a parabola. It's got arrows on the end, so it goes on forever there is an absolute minimum. The lowest y value in the whole picture is for sure y equals zero down here at the vertex. There is no absolute maximum because the parabola continues that word forever. So for the regular domain of this function, there's an absolute minimum and no absolute maximum. If I change the domain though, what if I put solid dot at uh, zero, zero, and a solid dot up here at two comma four? Now I have an absolute minimum. I still have an absolute minimum of y equals zero. At this time, I do have an absolute maximum because there is one ordered pair that has a y coordinate that's higher than any other y coordinate, and that's y equals four. So the absolute maximum now is four. The absolute minimum is still zero. If I made that an 
not a closed interval, if I didn't use that bracket at um, x equals zero, but use parentheses instead, now x equals zero is not in the domain, and I no longer have a minimum, because there's no colored in point there. There's no lowest down y value. There's, I still would have an absolute maximum here of four. If I don't define my function at either endpoint, then I have neither a minimum nor a maximum in this case. Notice I could make another function. I'll just do this in orange. It could have an open point here and an open point here. That function does have an absolute maximum because it gets a highest point up there. Um, so we're going to talk more about finding minimums and maximums by looking at a graph. So this example, not too tough. I've asked you to find all the global extrema. Well, there are two kinds of extrema, minimums and maximums. So if I ask you for the global minimum, that's going to be the point that has the smallest y value. Minimum is going to be negative 1. The maximum is going to be the highest up y value on the whole function, which is at that point, which is 2. Reminder here, we did not do calculus. We're just getting used to these words. We're going to learn how to use calculus to find them in a minute. So something to consider here, this is kind of like what I was trying to show you with that little orange graph I just made a second ago. The minimum and maximum might not be at the endpoints, at either endpoint. It might be somewhere in the middle. And that's what happened here. I have a extreme minimum, a global minimum of y equals negative 1, which is not at either endpoint. I also have a maximum of y equals 2, which is not at either endpoint. And that's sort of the gist of this next little section in your notes down here, which um, maybe didn't come out great in your note paper, but you can see this from figure 4-3 in your textbook if you want to take a closer look. So a theorem that is good to know, if a function f is continuous, over a closed interval, that means I've included the endpoints, and I have, I have endpoints, um, then f has to have a maximum value, it has to have a minimum value. So you can see here that maximum or minimum could, incur, could happen at the interior points. Interior point is what we call something that's not an endpoint. Uh, they could be at the endpoints, or you could have the maximum at an interior point and the minimum at an endpoint. So there's no guarantee where it's going to happen, but I can guarantee you that there is a maximum value and there is a minimum value if f is continuous over a closed interval. Okay, so local extreme values are, well, different from global extreme. Global extreme value, the global maximum, is the biggest y value in the whole picture. The local maximum is the biggest y value in an area. So when I talk about this with my Algebra 1 students, I usually say that the local maximum is the y value at the top of a hill. The local minimum is the y value at the bottom of a valley. So there's a big idea here. Okay, I'll put notes on your paper. Let's see if we can make that fit. So you see this uh, picture on your paper. The absolute maximum is up here. It's the highest y in the whole graph. This, that's a maximum compared to its neighbors, so we call it a local maximum. Um, a, an absolute maximum might also be a local maximum. It doesn't always have to be. There's a note on your paper, your textbook says that this is a local minimum. It's the lowest y value in its area. Everybody agrees that this is a local minimum. It's at the bottom of a valley, and it has, the valley has two sides. Your textbook says that this is a local minimum. This is also a local minimum. Other textbooks and other math scholars would disagree and say that you can't have a local extreme value at an endpoint. The AP board knows that, we, that mathematicians don't agree on this one. They know that different textbooks publish different statements about this, so they are never going to ask you a question that there's still disagreement about. So if you said that this was a local minimum 
or you said that it wasn't the local minimum, they're not even going to ask that question. Or if they do, it's going to be okay to give either answer. So the textbook I use in Algebra 1 would not call this a local minimum because the valley doesn't have a second side. That's a local minimum, but what's currently there is not. So you might find that sometimes I forget to think about these guys as local minimums. You can call me on it, you can ask a question, but again, the AP board knows that there's disagreement and they won't ask this question. Okay, so here's the big deal in 4.1. Any place that we had a local maximum or a local minimum, the kind that everybody agrees on, not the kind that happened at endpoints, but a local maximum or local minimum, either, see here, a cusp or a corner, F prime would be undefined. Here, horizontal tangent, F prime would be zero. That is true, always. That is so true, it gets a theorem. So check out, this is at the top of your next page. If a function f has a local maximum or a local minimum at an interior point, interior meaning not an endpoint, and that is like where x equals c, then it must be the case that either f prime doesn't exist, f prime of c doesn't exist, or f prime of c is exactly zero. That's going to be the basis of most of the things we do in chapter four. So here's an important definition. A critical point. A critical point of a function f is any point on its domain at which f prime equals zero or f prime does not exist. And then you can see here, maximum and minimal points in the interior always occur at critical points. But critical points are not always minimums or maximums. So on the AP test, they might ask you to find the location of a relative minimum or they might ask you to find critical points. You have to kind of understand the difference between them, which is gonna be most of what we spend our time on in 4.1 and 4.2.